spring 1193, and Richard the Lionheart finds himself a prisoner of the Holy Roman Emperor, Henry VI. Imprisoned in the formidable Trifels Castle in modern-day southwest Germany, he is being held to ransom for 150,000 marks, three times the annual income of the English crown. Surrounded by thick stone walls and guarded day and night, escape seems impossible for the King of England. But how did he get here? Join me as I explore the life of Richard the Lionheart. What fueled his thirst for adventure and glory? How did he navigate the treacherous politics of his time? Who was the man behind the title? What drove him to become a king and a crusader? And what legacy did he leave behind? From the battlefields of the Crusades to the royal courts of Europe, I'll be unraveling the story of Richard the Lionheart, king and crusader. Richard was born on September the 8th in Oxford in the year 1157. He was the third legitimate son of King Henry II of England and Eleanor of Aquitaine. Being the third son, Richard was not initially expected to ascend to the throne, a position reserved for his elder brothers William and Henry. From an early age, Richard honed his skills in chivalry, warfare and courtly manners. As Richard grew into a man, he was considered to be very attractive for his time. He possessed hair that was somewhere between red and blonde, framing a face with light, piercing eyes. His complexion, notably fair, added to his charismatic presence, often capturing the attention of those around him. In 1169, Henry devised a plan to divide his and Eleanor's lands among their three eldest sons, after a peace treaty had been secured between England and France, and Richard had married Alice, Countess of the Vexin, fourth daughter of Louis VII. Henry, the eldest son, was to become King of England with control over Anjou, Maine and Normandy. Richard would inherit Aquitaine and Poitiers from his mother, and Geoffrey would secure the title of Duke of Brittany by marrying Constance, the daughter of the current Duke of Brittany. In 1170, Henry II fell gravely ill and implemented his plan to partition his territories, although retaining ultimate authority over his sons and their lands. Henry, his son, was crowned as heir apparent in June 1170, while Richard departed for Aquitaine with his mother in 1171. Two years later, fueled by resentment towards their father's rule and his favoritism towards their youngest brother, John, Henry the young king, Richard and Geoffrey joined forces with their mother to challenge Henry II. This would come to be known as the Great Revolt. Their combined rebellion sought to seize power and lands from their father's control, resulting in a tumultuous conflict that spanned England and France with the young king seeking the protection of Louis VII and making an oath, alongside Richard, that they would not make terms with their father without the consent of the French king. On the 8th of September, 1174, a truce was brokered between Henry and Louis, deliberately leaving out Richard from its terms. Feeling abandoned by Louis and apprehensive about confronting his father's forces, Richard humbly approached Henry II's court at Poitiers on the 23rd of September. There, he pleaded for forgiveness, tears in his eyes as he fell at Henry's feet. Moved, Henry granted Richard the kiss of peace, along with control of two castles in Poitou and half of Aquitaine's income. After the truce between Henry and Louis, Richard sought to regain favour with his father. Over the years, he engaged in various campaigns, including battling the King of France and securing territories in Aquitaine. However, tensions within the family persisted, leading to further rifts. In the summer of 1183, Henry the Young King died at the age of 28, succumbing to dysentery contracted during a campaign in Limousin against his father and brother, Richard. Richard was officially crowned king in Westminster Abbey on the 3rd of September, 1189. Despite traditions barring Jews and women from the inauguration, some Jewish leaders arrived to present gifts for the new king. However, when rumours circulated that Richard had ordered the killing of all Jews, violence erupted in London. This led to the destruction of many Jewish homes by arsonists, with some seeking refuge in the Tower of London. Tragically, among those killed was Jacob of Orléans, a respected Jewish scholar. Recognising the potential destabilisation of the kingdom, Richard took swift action, 
ordering the execution of those responsible for the most brutal acts, including rioters who accidentally burned Christian homes. In the following year, Richard focused on planning the Third Crusade, using funds from his father and selling off estates and offices, including the office of the Archbishop of York. As a symbolic gesture, he swore an oath to renounce his past actions, aiming to demonstrate his commitment to his rule. The crusade aimed to recapture Jerusalem following its loss to Saladin, the Muslim ruler of Egypt in 1187. His journey to the Holy Land began with preparations in Europe, where he secured alliances with other European rulers, including King Philip II of France and Emperor Frederick Barbarossa of the Holy Roman Empire. Upon arriving in the East, Richard quickly established himself as a formidable force. His military prowess was showcased in significant victories, notably the capture of the strategically important city of Acre in 1191, following a gruelling and long drawn out siege. The fall of Acre was a turning point, providing the Crusaders with a major foothold in the region. Richard's leadership and tactical skills were instrumental in this achievement, earning him respect among both allies and adversaries. However, the Third Crusade also faced formidable challenges. Tensions simmered among the European leaders, particularly between Richard, Philip and Barbarossa. These tensions often hindered coordination and cooperation among the Crusader forces, despite their shared goal. The death of Emperor Barbarossa on the 10th of June 1190 during the journey to the Holy Land further complicated the Crusade's dynamics as he was not only a respected leader, but also a unifying figure among the European contingents. His loss was keenly felt, adding another layer of complexity to the already challenging campaign. Despite these challenges, Richard's military prowess was evident in battles like the Battle of Arsouf on the 7th of September 1191, where his forces decisively defeated Saladin's army. However, the ultimate goal of retaking Jerusalem remained elusive. The crusade culminated in the Treaty of Jaffa in 1192, after Richard had made one last attempt to strengthen his bargaining position by attempting to invade Egypt, Saladin's chief supply base, but failed. Although Jerusalem remained in Muslim hands, this treaty allowed Christian pilgrims access to Jerusalem and secured other territorial gains for the crusaders. Richard's departure from the Holy Land followed this treaty after realising that his prolonged absence from England could lead to further exploitation by his brother John and King Philip II of France, Richard I understood that he needed to rush his return from the Crusades. Both Philip and John were seizing opportunities in Richard's absence, prompting him to hasten his plans to safeguard his kingdom and assert his authority upon his return. However, bad weather diverted Richard's ship to Corfu which at the time was part of Byzantine Emperor Isaac II's Angelus territory. Emperor Angelus opposed Richard's takeover of Cyprus, once Byzantine land. Disguised as a Knight Templar, Richard departed Corfu with four companions. Unfortunately, their ship became shipwrecked near Aquileia in the north of Italy, compelling Richard's group to navigate a perilous overland journey through Central Europe. Just before Christmas in 1192, Leopold of Austria seized Richard near Vienna accusing him of orchestrating Conrad of Montferrat's assassination while he was in Acre. Richard's actions in the siege, notably tearing down Leopold's standard, further infuriated the Austrian ruler. Subsequently, Richard languished in captivity at Dernstein Castle along the Danube River. Richard was imprisoned here for three months until March 28, 1193, when he was transferred to Trifles Castle by Holy Roman Emperor Henry VI, located 90 miles southwest of modern-day Frankfurt. Henry, needing funds to raise an army and assert control over southern Italy, demanded a ransom of 150,000 marks for Richard's release, a sum two to three times the annual income of the English crown at the time. The money was collected from English subjects who were heavily taxed, including clergy and laymen, who were taxed a quarter of their property's value. Church treasures were seized and land taxes were imposed. Finally, on February the 4th, 1194, Richard was freed, Philip II warned John with a message, look to yourself, the devil is loose. After his release from Trifles Castle, Richard launched a war against Philip, seeking to regain territories lost to him during his captivity and to assert his authority as a powerful ruler. During the Battle of Gisors in 1198, Richard adopted God and my right as his motto, a phrase still used by the British monarchy to this day. 
This was a declaration of his rank, asserting that no one was his superior but God to Emperor Henry. In March 1199, Richard found himself besieging the nearly defenseless castle of Chalou Chabrol in Limousin. However, tragedy struck on March the 26th, when Richard was hit in the shoulder by a crossbow bolt, which turned gangrenous. He passed away on the 6th of April in his mother's arms. Richard's heart was buried in Rouen, Normandy, his entrails in Chalus, where he was killed, and his body interred at Fontevraud Abbey in Anjou, lying at his father's feet. Leaving no legitimate heirs, Richard acknowledged only one illegitimate son, Philip of Cognac. His brother John succeeded him as king. During his reign, Richard was hailed as a brave military leader, but also criticized for his cruelty and indulgence in sins. Spending less than a total of six months in England during his 10-year reign, he was once condemned by Ralph, the sixth abbot of Coggeshall Abbey, who summarized Richard's career deploring that the king was one of the immense cohort of sinners. Over time, opinions on Richard have fluctuated, but we now view him as a good historic king, especially when compared to his successor, John. But that's a story for another video. Did Richard the Lionheart's life captivate you? Share your thoughts below. Which aspects of his life inspired you the most? If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for more fascinating insights into Richard I and his extraordinary reign. There's much more to uncover. And don't forget to hit the bell icon for our latest videos. Until next time, keep exploring.